Hello everybody, my name is Jock and today is a very special day because we have some very very special people here. We have the voice cast of Team Fortress 2 here. Hello everybody. Hey! Hello! Hello! We have... April Fest! <laughs> we have <laughs> Robin Atkin Downs, who's the medic. Um, Ellen and John as the sniper and administrator, and of course Gary Schwartz as heavy, and Dennis Bateman who's the spy and the pyro. Gary is also a demo. Um, well, <laughs> welcome. And uh, I want to start out since you know we might as well just uh, you know everybody's gathered here today. So I was wondering, could I get uh, a a picture? <laughs> sure, let's do it. Everybody smile. Uh, let me I turn can... on the flash real quick. Uh, all right. If I can. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Great. That's one for the memory books. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, welcome, everybody. And um, first, I want to jump into a question. A question from myself right here in this chair. How how's everybody doing? How are you? We're good, good. Ladies, good. ladies first. <laughs> yeah, ladies first. Victory. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I'm 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 so glad to hear. Like That's really it's exciting to be here. I um this whole thing just sort of came out of um the ether and um I've I've it's been like uh it's kind of been the, the way it was. My father learned how to swim. His brothers took him down to the river and threw him in. And uh, so it's great to be here with uh, Shork and Andrew and all everybody who is making this happen for us. Yeah. We, uh, the community is very, very, very happy to have you guys. And it's a very big thing for us. And I see some of you have already gotten started on the signings. Uh, Gary did a stream yesterday and it was- uh, That really was nice. great. So much uh, fun. And everybody should right now, if you haven't gotten a signing yet, you should uh, you should go to streamily.com uh, slash TF2 and get one. Uh, there's some amazing art, including some made by a good friend of mine named Gwen. And yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good, <we're>, good plug. <laughs> <laughs> we're all really, really happy to be here. And th there we go. That's uh, that's one of the things. Yeah, I just want to say um, for me, talking to uh, you because a lot of people out there don't know that uh, this was this last couple of weeks was the first time that I uh, was able to talk to everybody else on this stream chat here. And it was an absolute pleasure putting together those, uh, those fun things um, for the fans and uh, just everybody is so cool. And I'm hoping that uh, one day we can all get together maybe on a stage, you know, together live and do something for the fans. That would be yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, that'd be great. I know, I know that, uh, that we had, a, we had a great time putting together our little semi animated thing that we put up as the promo for this. Um, and, and we're looking forward to our uh, streamily signing. It's going to be uh, the next couple of days. We haven't really set it up specifically yet, but it's going to be either tomorrow or Tuesday, I think. Yeah, so. I want to just uh, a big shout out to every all the fans there that have supported this signing. It's been uh, at least you know it's been pretty overwhelming to see all the people that have ordered this group shot. Um, yeah. yeah, amazing. And also, I just want to say the videos you guys did, amazing. The community have been loving them. I've I've seen like <laughs> several pieces of of ad made just from those. It's amazing. Um, well, maybe we'll well, maybe we'll write something uh, all together because um, we kind of threw those together last minute, and we'll do right. a group one and post that in the next couple of weeks. We'll see if everybody's down for it, and uh, we'll do that. Amazing. Um, Great idea. Also, I you know now we got to start with the questions. We've been getting a a ton of questions. Um, I think we've gathered over over a thousand actually. Uh, which we've kind of been reading through, and then we've been, um, yeah, getting some of the best ones to show to you guys. So one of the first ones, one of the main ones, is that we want to go all the way back to the beginning. A lot of people would really love to know, how did it start? Like, how did you guys get um, in, in touch with, with everything? How did you end up getting your roles, getting cast? Um, 
for, for Valve for Team Fortress 2. And um, if, if each of you would be uh, would like to uh, talk a bit about that, that would be awesome. And I think does anybody does anybody remember specifically? I, I don't even remember when the first uh, recording session was for the auditions for this. Well, I know I, it's I know it's at least a decade ago, but I'm not exactly sure when we started. It must oh, have been like 2006 yeah, yeah. or seven, right? Right. Well, it was released. It was released in 2007. So so I seem to recall getting getting dates for this as early as 2004. Oh. Mm. I think they were working on it for a while. So yeah. yeah so so you know, way back in the in the dawn of time when <laughs> dinosaurs were sucking oil out of each other and all that kind of stuff. Yes. You know, they, uh, they, of course, so, so a valve is a company in Seattle. And that's why you see that uh, the three of it, or four of us here are, are actors who live in Seattle. Um, and they let Robin in anyway, even though he lived in LA, um, <laughs> because he's just so sad and he seemed like he needed work. Um, but, but uh, they, they literally sent out auditions uh, to agents and uh, the agents uh, decided, you know, which actors they had that uh, you know cl most closely fit the bill. Um, now, Ellen and I had already worked on Half Life Two. Ellen was Overwatch, and I was the voice of the citizens, so they knew our work. But uh, but we had to audition along with everybody else. And I don't remember the audition at all. Yeah, she was pretty stoned. No, sorry. No. <laughs> I'd like to say, can Ellen, can you just talk in your administrative voice? Because it's the coolest, uh, you know, you steal, you stole the show the other day. It's the most amazing. I don't know how you came up with it, but it's super cool. I love it. Well, you you know, Robin, I, I call the administrator the skinny old bitch. <laughs> we actually and just to answer, the, oh, so, yeah, we, just answer the question where no, we know is coming is that yes, Ellen does use the administrator voice when we're having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Over time, <laughs> we just should have come home. <laughs> Administrative fest. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious though, uh, the, the character herself is, is, a, is a skinny old bitch, right? Yes. Well, I'm, I, you know, when I- I am not I think skinny. But I, think, I am I, old and I am a bitch. I'm just saying that I, I, I have a feeling that because I did I don't think I saw a picture of the spy before I auditioned for the role. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, came yeah. Yeah. maybe they're still working on that, but maybe uh, with that description they decided what she should look like. <laughs> well, but the thing is the the it was actually a fan who came up with how the administrator looks. Oh and uh, it was fan art. And Valve liked it so much, they bought it. So all the different, uh, you know, renditions of the administrator now are based on that initial artwork by a fan. And I can't remember the person's name. I wonder if that's the case I for love, all. you know, I love the gray streak. And you can see my tiny administrator with her mm -hmm. tiny gray streak. And she's in her little suit. And there she is. <laughs> Styling. I think everything that Valve has done, I mean, I, I, I uh, sort of, when I first got my first computer, um, you know, I played Half-Life and it was <clears throat> by far the most amazing game on the planet at the time. And so coming in to, you know, work on this, I knew that I was working with the big boys. And, uh, you know, the specifics you're talking about, Ellen, everything about this, game i mean this is known as one of the greatest games of all time right now and it's because of the specifics it's because of the the humor which is obviously carried on to, into the fans the fans are like cracking me up daily with their little one-liners but um oh, i know but the specifics of the of the design of the characters <coughs> so, you know we're just lucky to have worked on this and um you know, been a, been a, uh, I'd say for myself, just been a little small part, uh, be, you know, on, on top of the, uh, the design, you know, a little bit of icing on the cake, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole idea of having characters who kill each other and then insult each other after they've killed each other <laughs> is, is just so hilarious. The, yeah. 
you know, that we're not just violent, we're rude. <laughs> 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 well, I do. I do. I do actually do. Uh, uh, back to the, the initial question. I do have a recollection very clearly of the first audition I made, um, or I should say the first session. The auditions we did, at least I did, from my home studio and uh, just mailed in, you know, an MP3 file and they, and they cast me from that as the spy. So I went in to do the session and, and um, uh, I feel a little bit... Um, sheepish in a way when when fans uh, assume that I am uh, some sort of sage about this this uh, game and that I know all the ins and outs because really my part initially was just to have a, a page of, of lines set in front of me uh, on a mic stand and um, just had to, just read the lines and how you know they would give me some direction and I, we would try different accents and I never even so much as saw a script. I mean, normally you go into audition for a movie or something like that. You get to see the script ahead of time, see what character, how your character fits. There was none of that. It was just lines, death rattles, sh screams, insults, as John said. And um, after it was over with, they said, you know, we have this other character. Uh, we haven't decided what he sounds like. Uh, you know, we're not which, we're sure which way we're going to go with him. But, but if you want to give a, a, if you want to read for that, you know, we'd be happy to have you do that. So I said, sure, why not? And they handed me the pyro. <clears throat> and then the pyro's lines were all written out in regular English. And I said, oh, these are cool. And he said, uh, the director said, well, actually, we can't understand anything he says. So you won't be actually articulating these lines as such. And I said, because he's got a mask on. He's got this gas mask on. So I tried various different ways to garble the voice to make it sound like it was in a mask. And finally, I just... <laughs> and they said i thought i thought it, uh, that was the most ridiculous choice i could have possibly made but they said yes that's it that's what we're looking for <laughs> so it was serendipity you know it was serendipity and there there was their born was born the spy and i yeah. love the i love the meet the pyro movie i mean i love all the movies but meet the pyro and you find out that what in is in the pyro's mind is all flowers and unicorns and yeah. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for me, yeah, I, I just I think I got a description in my email uh, and it said heavy weapons guy, um, Eastern European type accent and uh, which, um, you know, ranges anywhere from Polish to Russian. And, uh, you know, I my when I do uh, gibberish in uh, improvisation, my uh, my background is uh, that Eastern European background. So I just did. Uh, I just did that kind of voice, and uh, I didn't see a picture. Uh, and then when it said um, uh, for the demo man, it said uh, a one-eyed black Scottish bomber. <laughs> and I said oh, a one-eyed black Scottish bomber. One-eyed was the key. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I said. So I said, well, I'm going to give this one a try, too, because uh, uh, early, early on, I think in the 90s, I did a, um, uh, a semi live action video game slash uh, called the Jungle Book, uh, where I played uh, Colonel Il Guam, which is Mowgli spelled backwards. And uh, I, I played a Scottish uh, 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 Scott, this character, the, the narrator was the Scottish uh guy and um so i just used that same voice basically and uh just made him a little meaner and harsher because he was more destructive than colonel il guam but, uh, <laughs> and i don't even know if that game exists anymore but i still have a copy that That's was played on an ibm pc you know with two floppy drives right <laughs> It's incredible yeah, I mean, they, how deep you go, Gary, when you do your uh, heavy, like when we did our thing together. Yeah. We taped and I was like, eh, I don't know. His it's voice is kind of high. And then all of a sudden, it just like you unleashed it on me. And I was like, oh, oh I can God. go like this. Of <laughs> course. That's my uncle and grandfather talking. <laughs> <laughs> they were still in there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and, they, and then when they sent me the sniper, I mean, they said that, you know, yeah, this guy has a campaign hat and we were thinking that he might be an Aussie, but, you know, give us some various accents and which I did. And they decided to stay with the Aussie accent. And I was really glad that they did because 
he just seems so Australian to me. And it's interesting to me that so many fans think that he's from New Zealand. <laughs> and I, I mean, the New Zealand accent is, I have to really study it to come up with a, a good New Zealand accent. Because um, the, the, some of the vowel substitutions are just so strange. Nothing against Kiwis. I love you guys and I love your accent and I wish I could do it all day long. But it's just uh, fun to me that that so many people now think that he's from New Zealand. So I just, you know, he's basically from somewhere in the ocean between Australia and New Zealand. I think. Yes, you know, you know, that is interesting because I can recall auditioning um, when, when I got in the studio to do the first session uh, for Spy. They said, well, we're not sure what, you know, and I re recall this is not to um, to disrespect any particular nationality, but I recall somebody saying, you know, generic Euro trash. I. I, I don't know. Um, you know, try, let's try some accents. So I tried German, I tried British and Spanish, and they finally, you know, the French. And they said, I think that's the one we're going with. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that French one. So that's, um, it was all kind of seat of the pants at the time. You know, the spy could just as easily have been a German or a Norwegian, I guess. Right, right. I think, well, I think what started uh, the, the process, uh, it sounds like uh, for the rest of you, and for me as well, is that, you know, although they had you know, unbeknownst to anybody at that time created this amazing, I mean, they are valves, so they're going to create amazing stuff. But uh, when they came in, they were sort of free and open to uh, improvising certain lines. So, they, and they were kind of in a, just a sort of relaxed mood. So, you know, I just started yelling out, little did I know I should have been a little quieter at the time because now, Everything the medic says <laughs> is yelling. <laughs> and I'm like, if I would have just started out with like, oh yes, uh, medic, <laughs> uh, get to the act, uh, you know, maybe they would have been perfect. <laughs> I set the precedence, but a lot of the lines from the first session were improvised, you know, and it just started saying weird, funny things. So maybe one of you guys said sandwich at some point, or, you know, one of the other crazy things that have been thrown in but um it was a kind of a, a relaxed uh process for the for the uh for the session. yeah yeah well uh, uh bill um bill van, bill van buren who directed us um was just a very open guy uh, as far as being a you know collaborative sort of artist and wanting to work with people and of course the writers um eric wolpa and uh was jay, jay uh, well jay has come on Ad, added right yeah yeah um, jake pinkerton and uh oh and who's the guy who wrote, wrote half-life um, mark laidlaw mark laidlaw and i think he uh, might have been involved too but all those guys i mean getting to hang around with them in the studio and and just spend time with them they're all just maniacs uh and and you know they're just very very fun people very creative people and i think they just they just love that energy that 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 interactive flow that's Awesome. That's awesome to hear. I'm sure a lot of people were like, yeah, a lot of people are on the edge of the seat right now. Um, it sounds like so a that, lot of that fun. Answers like, that's like one question out of a thousand. We got that one down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Hi, everybody. One down, one I'd down. be the same. <laughs> 999 more to go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, no, but I actually, I think you guys uh, actually managed to uh, answer a couple of questions in that one. Another one, uh, Dennis kind of answered this one, but it was a lot of people was wondering, did you guys get to see your characters be before? Like, were they fully f fleshed out? Did you know everything about them? Or was, were you just, like Dennis said, given Euro trash? I, I think how it worked, at least, I mean, particularly in uh, Meet the Sniper, uh, the artists and the writers at least interacted with me. And you guys, you know, hop in if the, your, your experience was different. But... Uh, uh, I would record some stuff and they would come back and the, the character would have evolved from the stuff that I had recorded last time. And uh, by the time we got to meet the sniper, the, you know, it, it, I just really felt totally invested in the character because I felt like, you know, stuff that I had done had given them ideas to go off and, and make alterations in the character before we finally came up with the final artwork and all that kind of stuff. Yes, that was my impression. I, I, I didn't. I don't recall seeing any artwork or uh, renderings before uh, I, I recorded the the uh, ses first session, and I got the impression that uh, they they listened to what they had from the voice sessions and sort of uh, the characters grew, um, uh, you know, 
visually from from that I, I i that that's my my guess but i didn't see any artwork ahead of time i think that the vo it struck me the voice recording came as one of the early aspects of the uh, production right right yeah exactly i saw the uh, uh i i did the lines in the first uh reading and then when i came back several months later and first of all i think part of why it was so fun was you know, you go in and you do a game and you don't know if this game is going to, you know, end up in the, in, in the, uh, you know, 50% off bin in six months. <laughs> so, you know, I just, to me, it was just another game. Uh, but then, uh, so I did the lines and then when I came back in and they said, Oh, do you want to see what, uh, you know, what we've come up with? And they showed me an early version of meet the heavy. And I, it just blew my mind. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, that got me really excited. And I, and you're right though. Then they said, you know, let's just collaborate and keep this going. And you know, and I, I love just trying to inject enough humor to make the guys on the other side of the window laugh. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, but the, but I have to say that this is something that I find I find fascinating to this day. I listen. I watch the the. Uh, like some of the gameplay and the uh, videos on uh, YouTube. And given the fact that I never worked with another actor in the studio, it was just me and a microphone and the guys in the booth. Uh, so there was no interplay between char different characters in the session. But when I uh, saw so my, my lines were completely wild. When, when I see the, the final product, they have been woven so seamlessly into this dialogue between all these characters that it sounds so natural. I'm just blown away. I, you know, I don't, yeah. don't know how much, how they were able to sweeten it or manipulate it somehow in the studio to make it sound so perfectly um, interactive, you know, and, and, uh, and conversational between the characters. It's just, I find amazing. And the humor. Um, I mean, I, I, I love the humor. My wife was just rolling on the floor the other day when I was playing some of these videos. She said, no wonder this game is so popular. It's hilarious. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I, I there's some there's some great comic, you know, minds in, in that in that uh, writing room, you know. I yeah. remember watching everybody else's uh, meet the video and just getting, you know, tons of emails. People saying, when is Meet the Medic coming out? I don't know if I was the last or was it uh, Gary? Was, I, th I think it was Pyro. No, Robin, you are not the last. Okay. I do oh. not have one. Oh, oh. <laughs> the administrator. Well, has now, please, let's get. Well, come on, Ellen. How many people do you kill? Uh, you know, hand hand hand, -hand combat here. <laughs> I have no idea. But I, I was so excited about it that when it was finally, they finally called me to go in and do it. I, I did it at LA Studios right down the street here. Uh, which I love that studio, by the way, because they have lots of delicious snacks, you know, and tea nice, yeah. before you go in and comfortable chairs. But um, yeah, I think that was the first. So my process was similar where they were just sort of they had a basic storyline and they would uh, experiment around diff different scenarios. And it was the first time that I actually got to say, it's time to practice medicine, you know, something very <laughs> quiet. Because I was screaming, and finally, like mid session, I was like, "Guys, um, can I just stop yelling all the time?" <laughs> They're like, "Sure." I mean, we didn't tell you to yell. I was like, "I know, that's just the character." But can I try? And they're like, "This is great. We're definitely going to use this." I'm like, "Okay." It was, it was fun. So, so your advice to young actors is pick a repeatable voice. Is what you're saying? Uh, you know, obviously, I've learned a lot over the years, and you know, when you go in for that first session especially if you're doing, uh, you know, creatures or a big guy, you know, right. Gary, you don't want to set the bar too high when you first go in there. You don't, you never <laughs> blow it out. I always learned in, um, in my theatrical education, never show all your notes, you know, hmm. at least on that first session, you want to give them, you know, a little bit more to uh, anticipate or, you know, down the line. So yeah, I, I went, I went full, I the the every time I've voiced medic, it's one hundred and fifty percent. There's no way out of that, and and that's what I kind of love about this character because it's so different from other stuff I've done. Yeah, and you know, just a, a vocal a vocal tip I would I would offer to aspiring a voice talent in games is that I learned from the first two uh, first few uh, that I did that when I walked into the uh, the session I said okay, 
you got all these lines out in front of me. Uh, you separate out the death rattles, the 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 uh, the, the the screaming um, war war sounds and things like that for the last. I mean, I don't because I would I would I would initially do those. They'd hand me a page of um, you know just uh, battle sounds and and death shrieks and uh, and uh, uh, gurgling um, limbs being cut off and. Uh, by the time I got to the actual dialogue part, I was talking like this <laughs> because you know I didn't hold back. I mean, if they, if they say we want to hear a fire in the hole, you know, then you know I just scream it as loud as I can. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you got it. <laughs> by that point, you know, my voice was pretty tired by the end, so I said, "No, they, they, those come last. Do the dialogue first. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, that can come back back to bite you because I remember I did a, a game not for Valve called The Suffering. Where at one session I had to come up with thirteen different characters, thirteen different accents, thirteen different characters, and and then they'd saved all the death rattles for last. So I had to scream as thirteen different people. God. And, you know, I mean, saying ah with a Scottish accent and saying ah with a Brooklyn accent. You know, it's it was it was a real challenge. So roll the dice, roll the <laughs> dice. Yeah. It's exciting uh, about this business, right? <laughs> uh, talking about all of this, all these weird lines you know full throttle you've been doing tf2 is you know a very different game so a lot of weird lines and this is probably the top most asked question that everybody would like to know which is individually what is your favorite line you have ever done for the game if we if we could just oh. start like from one end uh robin what what was your favorite line oh why you put me first <laughs> how dare you <laughs> oh gosh you know i I would say that, you know, that line that I said the other, that I just said, it's time to practice medicine because I don't know, it just kind of encapsulates who the medic is, you know, he's experimenting, he's helping other people out, he's practicing his medicine. Um, but that being said, there's a couple of um, outtakes on my site and I don't, now I can't remember the sessions, but we were saying things like, I'm an angry bird. Or I am the angry bird of the Badlands. Is, is that a real line? I mean, I think I was saying things like that. Like it, it is in the game. What? Okay. Uh, and and in the middle of those sessions, I was like, what the hell am I saying? But this is great. Okay, I'm gonna go 150%. So one of those. Yep. <laughs> Gary even has, has a line about laying eggs in people's mouths <laughs> because it was a bird Halloween update. Um <laughs> Very strange update, <laughs> but it's 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 uh, cool. So, um, uh, Ellen, what what about you? What's what's your favorite one? Well, you know, I I kind of have to uh, you know get on the bandwagon about you know the voice that I came up with for the administrator. I honestly don't remember how it happened, mm -hmm. but. She is angry and loud all the time. <laughs> so the lines that I like best are the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like over time. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, that's great. Um, so get um John, what about you for sniper? He has a a, a lot of uh interesting lines if you know what would right. you put at the top well uh other unlike uh robin and ellen i i was a very wise actor and chose a very <laughs> yeah. voice for the for the sniper so i'm free to like really long lines um, my favorite is in meet the sniper where he's talking to his dad on the phone he's, dad, dad dad i'm not a crazy gunman dad i'm an assassin what a difference be in one is a job and the other's mental sickness. Dead, <laughs> dead. Oh, uh, amazing. Put mom on a phone. So that's my that's my favorite. Uh yes. That uh that image has actually turned into uh what we what we now on the internet. We, TF2 is a very big part of that. It's just small images you put, people laugh at it, and um your line, that line has actually been immortalized and is used uh as, as a meme on the internet now all the time. <clears throat> And it, it's great. So what's well, it was such a wonderful concept when they, the writers came to me with this thing where you know this assassin. You know, we're in a game where everybody's a killer, and sniper has to talk to his mom and dad on the phone. I mean, I, that just cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, um, 
Gary, what about you? What about you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm of the short lines too, like with Ellen. So. <laughs> oh, my, my favorite heavy line is cry some more. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> what about for uh, demo? Yeah, oh, demo. Oh, they're going to have to glue you back together in hell. <laughs> <laughs> See, Gary has to yell too. I, I think it originated because they <clears throat> said, look, there's going to be people running all over and you're just going to hear people calling it out. And also back in that day, you had things like civilization. I can't remember all the games where you're, sort of suspended uh, 50 or 100 feet. And so I thought, well, maybe it'll be one of those where they're all sort of running around. And um, that's why we need to project. But Gary, a lot of yours are super projected too, is heavy, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I think one of the nice things about the sniper for me as an actor was that he was always up someplace high, someplace quiet, and all the mayhem was going on other places. And he was just waiting to throw urine on people and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, uh, Dennis, what, what about you? What's your absolute favorite spy line? You know, I've been trying to decide on, on that. There, I have two that I love the best. And so I'll just have to put them both together at the top. Um, but there's a scene, I forget the, the actual segment that it was, that it was from, but they have, oh, the team has decided, discovered that they have a few hours to live. And, uh, so spy being the cerebral guy that he is in the philosopher, he says, well, I want to have, I want everyone to put a piece of paper in this bucket. And, um, with, uh, with your suggestion of what we should do with our last few hours and scout um, being the little punk that he is um, puts in a picture and uh, spy is looking at the, this suggestion. He says, Hmm, you have the picture of me having sexual Congress with the Eiffel tower, the Eiffel tower having sexual Congress with me. I'm crying and the Eiffel tower has state lines coming off. <laughs> Then, uh, then another one where he is, uh, he uh, scout comes to uh, get a lesson in how to uh, um, romance a woman, how to get a date, because he wants a date with Miss Pauling. And uh, in in the, mid, in the beginning of the uh, lesson, uh, scout says, "Well, here's what I usually do: is bring a bucket of fried chicken." And spy knocks it out of his hand and says, "I am not one of your fried chicken tramps." <laughs> Amazing. Seduce me. <laughs> yeah. remember one, just remember one more. Where are your precious papers now, dumb cops? <laughs> uh, well, there, that's a tough, that's a tough choice. There's so many wonderful Bon Mo's and, uh, you know, um, pithy, funny sayings that come out of that. It's hard to choose, but I enjoyed all of those. Dennis. How, what about Pyro? Do you have a favorite line from Pyro? Oh, gosh. You know, this, uh, well, this is ironic, um, and you'll have to forgive me, but I honestly don't remember any of the lines from Pyro because when I listen to them today, <laughs> now I had scripts, you know, they, they, they put the scripts in my hands. If I'd kept them all these years, uh, I'd be able to tell you exactly what the lines are, but... Uh, I think the idea is that um, what's wonderful about Pyro's lines is that they're open to interpretation. You know, you can use your imagination to mm. think to to think what well, how you would respond in a situation like this. You know, I, and and how Pyro would. So I'm afraid I have to bail on that one because I just simply don't remember any of the specific lines that Pyro had. Yeah, Pyro's lines are definitely a mystery. Uh, so yes. it's a mystery that. Um, I'm from Denmark, and when I was about 13 or something, me and my stepbrother literally made like a conspiracy theory that Pyro was speaking Danish. But <laughs> and we, we thought we were so smart and stuff, and so I realized, but that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> then, yeah. So that, but 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 Denmark being such a hotbed of pyromaniacs, I can understand why uh, <laughs> why you would think that. No, that that's hilarious. And of course, there was that. I think there was a. Um, a conspiracy theory going around for quite a while that, uh, uh, well, I guess wouldn't be a conspiracy theory, but, uh, but that uh, Pyro was actually a woman. Yes. Right. I remember that. I remember when that was going around. Yeah. 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 It's still very much going around today. Um, <laughs> Got it. Still ongoing. Well, that's, that's, that's better than the most recent one I heard was that Dennis Bateman had died because they didn't, uh, people didn't see enough of me on social media. <laughs> 
<laughs> he must have died. Yeah, otherwise, why wouldn't he be there? <laughs> oh, yeah, but, but those are those reports are highly exaggerated. <laughs> Very much. Um, yeah, these the classes are amazing, and you know we we all love them. And another question that I've seen quite a lot is actually for Ellen, because uh, Ellen is the only one that does not have uh, a playable mercenary. So a lot of people actually wondered. Who would be Ellen slash the administrator's favorite one? Which one do you like the most if you had to choose anyone? In in TF2? Yes, in TF2. I've Careful. already made my <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, of, course, of course. That was my guess. <laughs> can you can without you imagine? That, that there's, there's trouble in paradise without that answer, yes. <laughs> can you imagine what the administrator and the sniper's children must be like? <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, that's great. Also, Ellen, Ellen, another very uh, another question been asked quite a lot. If uh, if the administrator who everybody loves, she's the uh, the sassiest woman alive. If she uh, was a playable character um, and had a weapon, what what weapon do you imagine she would have? Like a like a knife, a gun, an object, anything? A cigarette. <laughs> she would. Oh, she yeah. just, she just burn that's my with a weapon. A cigarette, a death stick. Cigarettes are death sticks. That's right. The administrator <laughs> kills people through secondhand smoke. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, so um, did you guys know that after your characters, after you know it became very big because of your voices and there was all this personality put into it, a lot of people you know, wanted to see more of that and was like is there a story around tf2 um which is very rare that that happens afterward but everybody wanted it and valve you know started releasing uh comics and uh i thought i'd, I'd ask you guys about um some of these things if you guys actually know some of the law in um in these comics that valve has written about your characters um for example uh gary um when it comes to heavy did you yeah. um wh what kind of a person do you see him as just like a, a dumb a dumb guy or, um what kind of what kind of person do you see him as because oh i don't see him as dumb he's uh you know he knows that nobody can outsmart bullet <laughs> very true so yeah. no some people think that i'm dumb maybe maybe yeah, you the know. sniper thinks that you're dumb yeah well <laughs> i am not dumb <laughs> it's uh, like from people from brooklyn you know you could be a a, 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 a a rocket scientist from brooklyn but if you talk like this then you know how smart can you be very true in in the comics heavy actually has um um a phd in russian literature <coughs> and he's actually a very smart guy Really? <laughs> he does. He takes very news to me. Yeah. <laughs> he takes very that came that family. came from a diploma mill. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it looks like they yes, had uh, as much fun on the comics as they did on the game before, you know, at, over this last couple of weeks, I've just kind of looked at all of the stuff out there. I've seen it sort of trickle in over the years. But there was one video out there where there's a guy who does a 15 minute recap of all of the comics. And the stories are just <laughs> so outlandish. They're like so out there. Like what? What? Yes. Is, but they're awesome too. You know, they're awesome, but they're like, and people die and then they don't die. And right. Well, I, I had a chance to. I, I was out there um, recording and got a chance to talk to Eric Wolpa about about the comics. And what he told me was very interesting. He said that that Valve used the comics to try out ideas, and if uh, the fan base responded particularly well to one thing or another, then that would show up as an update. So uh, that because writing a comic was just a lot less expensive than actually creating content for the game. And so they would use that to get fan feedback. And if some idea seemed to have a lot of potential, then, then that would come back in like, you know, the Halloween update or the weird conga line update, all the, all the weird things that they came up with. But it hasn't been completed yet, uh, right? It's no, there's still... still one issue missing. That um... oh my gosh, why are they doing that to us? Yes, in uh, <laughs> in the very in the very end of the last one, medic actually escaped from hell 
because it uh, turns out he could uh, bargain his way out of there with with the devil because he had apparently sold all the other mercenary souls to the uh, to um he had he had taken them all and basically just told the devil that he had majority soul stakes so he could just go out of there. Um, and then he implanted something in a bunch of baboons, right? Yes, he implanted he baby b baboons into people's hearts so he could press a button and uh, a baboon would be born. <laughs> very, very crazy. But another thing that was revealed, uh, which is, um, I'm not sure if Dennis uh, knows this, but, you know, in Meet the Spy, there was all the banter about um, Scout's mother, uh, about, you know, a spy and all that. It was actually revealed in the the flow, yes. Yes. It was revealed in this uh, last one that uh Spy is actually Scout's father. Um and it was a very <laughs> heartful moment and people really liked it. Did you uh, Well that? there you have it. See when he says uh um Shape Up or uh, pornography starring your mother will be only the second worst thing to happen to you today. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. And um, um, another fun fact, Ellen, did you know that um, you're absolutely right when you call the administrator the, the skinny old bitch because she's over 150 years old in the comics. <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> she's, she's well preserved for that. There's a picture of her aging somewhere in a vault, not right now. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the. The comics are just all, all out there, and uh, and John, as you mentioned earlier, the reason why people are saying Sniper is from uh, New Zealand is because there's a, the law is very, um, the story is very very weird. He's basically he grew up in Australia, that's why he has the accent and everything. But <laughs> okay, so it's a bit hard to explain. But basically, okay. what happened was he was born in New Zealand, but his parents were kind of like crazy, and they thought that the world was gonna end. So they put Sniper in a space rocket and tried to send him out into space. Uh, and, <laughs> but and it then, crashed in Australia or yeah, something? It crashed into Australia and he was adopted by a very sweet uh, and loving family. So I still don't know how he uh, turned out the way he did, but, you know. <laughs> well, I'd love to get that, that issue of, of, about of, of Spy being Scout's father. I kind of actually love that. I, he, Obviously, the child is a big disappointment, but uh, still, you know, <laughs> true. Uh, you gotta love them all. So, <laughs> yeah, later today, um, after we've answered some more questions, we're gonna be actually reading from some of these. If you guys have uh, have watched it, we have links and everything. We'll take a little break so we can set that up. But then you guys can kind of also see how the comics work and how they uh, how they look. And uh, we're gonna be reading from the one where um, it was actually found out that Spy was a uh, scout's. Uh, I was about to say daughter, father. Um, oh, but yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't get. I don't think I got that that sketch here. But um... oh, I, I'll I'll make sure uh, everything gets there in, in time. Okay. But you know, um, we we can like we we can move on uh, to some some of the other questions. Another one I've been seeing a lot is uh, because heavy is uh, you know the iconic sandwich eating madman, and a lot of people have been wondering is. Um, Gary, do, do you like sandwiches as much as Heavy does? And <laughs> what is what's your favorite sandwich? Can we get a rundown of that? Da, love sandwich, BLT, best sandwich in world. <laughs> All right, so now we know that everybody's gonna love that. <laughs> That's but it's, it's a live pig instead of just bacon. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, also. <laughs> Another thing, people really wanted to know the the inspiration behind uh, Robin's uh, German accent. Like, what what did you reference to it? Did you just come up with it yourself? Did you have to learn German to do it? Uh, how did how did it all go that go down? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, obviously, you grow up seeing uh, movies of uh, you know a lot of British people doing a German accent. I mean, that's doesn't necessarily sound like the real German accent, but. Uh, I wanted to make it uh, not too strong so that uh, would be able to be understood, you know, yelling at the top of your voice, all these things. So I kind of just went with the, I hope I didn't offend any Germans, you know. I, just went <laughs> I don't think you did. I think okay. Medic is a very, very enjoyable character for everybody. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I, th I think I used to just look up German words before I go in and just have, but sometimes things would just come off the cuff, you know, in the middle of the, uh, 
in the session, um, but I had a lot of fun. Very, very uh, true. Playing him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I respond. I, 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 respond to, I don't know. I like it. I respond I to the medic do. about the same way. Uh, uh, not all of us will remember Ludwig von Drake, but, uh, you know, oh, the yeah. medic has, has, a, has a special place in my heart along with Ludwig. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but He was Don Duck's uncle, I think. So, uh, you know, over the years, you guys, as, as some of you mentioned, in the beginning, it kind of just, uh, I see that uh, Ellen and John are gone, so we have a baby sniper there instead. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll just uh, get them back in just a moment. But basically, um, did you guys ever expect TF2 to like go where, where it is today, get as big as it is? Um, because it's been going for 15 years now, and it's yeah, actually yeah. still one of the top games. We're reconnected. We were we were cut out for a minute. Ah, no worries. Um, so, what were you asking, Ellen? Oh, uh, we were just asking. Uh, we were just asking overall that if any of you guys ever expected TF2 to get where it is today, still being one of the top games in the world um, after 15 years. <sighs> And being well, like you know, I, I, we, we, uh, it strikes me after <clears throat> the last Comic Con that we did together and our question and answer panel that I looked, uh, I looked along the table, and a lot of us are uh, rather mature actors now. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, and I, 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 sure. I thought, well, why are all, why are all these young people sitting here, you know, listening to people that could be their grandparents or, or at least their parents? But, but we, we, we really are, we really are the. I guess the first generation of professional voice game actors. Yeah. Yes. And uh, um, so I don't think there was much of a, I didn't even know what, what, what we had done. I'd done a lot of commercials and, you know, uh, corporate training narrations and things like that, all kinds of, of uh, radio drama, but I never knew what, what a game could become. And so I never expected to have for there to be a second uh, recording session. I thought that was a one-off job. I get a pay, you know, I'll get a, a check, and that'll be it. And the the idea that uh, we we were kept call, being called in every year, sometimes multiple times, to record new dialogue and new new uh, stories for the game was just um, astounding to me. In fact, I remember getting a call when I was working out of town in theater one time, saying, you know, they, we want they want to make some plush toys <laughs> out of these all these ruthless assassins in Team Fortress Two. And they're going to be like Chatty Cathy, where you pull a string and it talks, right? So, so uh, I said, they said, can you get into a studio and record the, this dialogue? I said, sure. And we were supposed to, you know, get, we, we got paid for the session, but I never saw the plush toys. That was a disappointment. I yeah. thought that would have been really fun. Although I'd like to ask if anybody else on the, on the panel here today was able to acquire uh, any of the, was it action figures or, or dolls that were minted oh, yeah. by Valve Studios? I was never able to get a hold of one. The, the, the spies were all gone by the time I yeah. found out about them. I, I don't know if you can see people. us. You don't seem to have our camera anymore. Uh, yeah, you guys will, uh, will have to, uh, to uh, go back on that link that Andrew sent you a bit ago. But uh, Well, we, can... we're back on Zoom. Um, well, Robin's, got, Robin's got his there. I got NECA and um, uh, where is my camera shaky or is it just on my it's, side uh, that I'm seeing? It? It, it, it might be your internet. Oh, okay. So I'm fine though. You can see me streaming. Yes. Mm -hmm. this is fine. Um, okay, um, yeah. I mean, I well, actually, let's get them worked out so we can see their camera. Yeah. Um, Alan and John. And Dennis, it's like Gary's. Dennis, if you didn't know, there's also this actually, which is uh, which was made by by fans and was turned into a real thing, which is a spike wrap. And it's very Sp famous. It's one of the uh, biggest selling TF2 merchandise. It's, you're a little <laughs> guy, but he's a crab. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, sure. So Ro Robin, did you, did you find, did Gary and Robin, did you I, find whoa, those in game stores or did you get those I from I found Bell? these and I put some on my shop and they're just like, you know, people are just like, oh my God, okay, I gotta have one of these. But uh, yeah, I have, I have around oh, wow. my studio like a bunch of different things, you know. From, All right, so like, John and Ellen got theirs. I see. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I think that's the oh, one I got. Uh, look at the sniper. They're wow, really sniper. Nice. That's a that's a beauty. Yeah, this isn't is this nice? nice? Yeah. Well, I got this, but I went out to Valve to record some stuff for Dota 2, and I whined about not having a sniper thingy, <laughs> and so they gave me one. 
So whining is a, a wonderful tool. I tried that myself, but then they said they were they had given them all out as uh, perks to clients or something. Oh, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll show you one of my most prized possessions in my studio. Um, this was something that I just asked for a poster way back. I, I can't remember when. And um, the a lot of the people, you know, brilliant people that worked on this game. Uh, sent me this poster and signed it, and it's just that's, oh, that's, that's awesome. Special. Nice. That is awesome. That's amazing. But I wanted to say, and to answer your question, short about the response and how everybody's still in. This is like you know just a stunning, beautiful game. But I think it's uh, people are connected to it because for some reason it uh, it has helped a lot of people get through a lot of tough times. I'm sure you guys have received mails. I mean, I've, t- I've heard from people that were in hospital, you know, for months and Team Fortress 2 got them through it. And for, yes, it, for some, some reason, yeah. it is just one of those really special games that's not just really fun to play, but it's uh, helped a lot of people not only get through life, but create relationships, you know, through these groups, you know, find connections. So I think that's well, another I, reason. It's so fantastic. Yeah, I mean, as far as go- going back to, you know, did I think that this was going to be a great game? I, I was fortunate enough uh, to get into video games pretty early on. I think I made Spy Fox breakfast cereal back in 95 or something like that. And I did a lot of games in the 90s where, you know, characters weren't really fully developed people. Um, I did a lot of games where I was just going, you know, weapons, health now, you know, look up there and stuff like that. And, and when I started working for Valve, they, uh, they, they developed, they, they needed actors to play these characters because they, they had fully developed personalities and stuff. And that's what they were working uh, that's what they were looking for. Um, when uh, Ellen did Portal, uh, you know, I was just so impressed with the writing, and the same same way with TF2, that the writing was just so great that it was it was a, a, another level beyond most of the games that I had done. Well, yeah, most of the games that I had done. There were a few others that really had personality, but but a lot of them were kind of you know we you were various chess pieces basically um, with voices. Uh, and uh, the, the Valve games were the first time that I was involved with games that really wow. developed the characters as, as human beings that you would, you would interact with. Yes. Uh, Valve actually also, um, with, with Team Fortress 2, they released uh, an original animation software, which is where they made all, these, uh, all the, meet the Meet the Team videos. And people have created so, much, so many things on the internet. If you guys didn't know, there's actually been instances of Team Fortress 2 videos with your characters being in world record books for, for simply just being some of the biggest things to happen on the internet. And the characters are just embedded in, in internet culture now. So again, we're really honored to have all of you here. Um, uh, and and it, it's, it's a rare case to see a game where every character is, uh, gets equally the equal amount of attention literally every character in tf2 has the equal amount of attention everybody in other games seems to love one character but in tf2 it's just everybody loves everybody because they work so well together they contrast each other and work that way and it's amazing and i was wondering if you guys had had ever stumbled upon any animations uh, with your voice lines or anybody's ever like showed you or anything and you have any fun, funny stories about that <laughs> every day like i get emails and tweets if i'm doing uh you know working on another game or maybe even doing a signing for another game i'd say 90 percent of the people <laughs> in that stream are from team fortress 2 and my and some people uh, you know sometimes type in stop leave them alone you know we're here for this other thing and i'm like bring it on guys i love it i appreciate the support i appreciate your humor and I'm glad this game meant so much to you and I'm just feel so happy to, to be a part of it and to meet all these other guys and, and to be here today. Yeah. I think there's a, there's an, uh, there's a, a funny thing that happened to me where I had, I, for a while I was a uh, charity auctioneer and uh, I had some videos that I'd put on YouTube uh, of my auctioneering work and I never got any responses to viewers from those. 
but on a regular basis, I would get people on responding to those, to those auction videos saying that auctioneer is a red spy <laughs> or, you know, that auctioneer is a, uh, or, or they would quote some line from, from uh, team fortress too. <laughs> so I thought that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty powerful testimonial to the fact that team fortress two has uh, made an impact. And the fact that to me, I mean, I, I, I thought the game was dead. I mean, when we, when the, when the, when the before the, well, long before the pandemic even hit, uh, I, I'd stopped going in to do any, any uh, additional dialogue for it. They weren't having any sessions for that. And I thought, you know, the, that game was big during my children's generation, right? So um, I still have a lot of fans in, in that Gen X group or whatever. But, um, but to find out now that, there's, that there is a huge worldwide following now of this game, even though it's not even being produced anymore, yeah. is uh just astounding to me and a, and a you know a, a credit to the people who produced it and put it together that it's lasted this long and doesn't seem to be slowing down yeah very team 42 actually hit its top players ever last summer which is you know kind of rare for a game that's 15 years old um really amazing. yeah it's <clears throat> very interesting i think and yeah. it's just you guys have been so, become such iconic characters and i um I was wondering, have you guys ever been, you know, recognized uh, in real life or like anywhere where you went? Uh, I have any, any f funny stories about that. I heard uh, Gary talk about one yesterday on, on his signing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, well, first of all, about the other the other question, uh, uh, I somebody uh, years ago asked me to uh, record uh, uh, the heavy uh, singing uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> and you know and they said could you please record this and you know uh, so I, so i i just thought okay for you sure and so i listened to you know uh queen in my headset and you know tried to follow along and recorded it at home uh, you know mama just killed a man and uh, <laughs> and uh you know sent it to him <laughs> And then he uh, he made a uh, video of the heavy, like a like an MTV music video of that, uh, and uh, so he sent me the link, and it was pretty amazing uh, looking. It looked really good, and I I was impressed. It it's actually um, uh, before we we go to the re um, being recognized. It's actually your voices have have come so far that they're all. Um, they're all actually, there's people trying to kind of um, uh, um, immortalize them by building artificial intelligence robot to uh, to kind of learn how your voice is as your character oh. and repeat. Oh my. And there are people <laughs> doing that now. There's people, there's multiple, there's YouTube channels where all they do is they, they have like a funny thing they think that the characters would say and then they write it out. With these um, with these voices to kind of like expand on on the content to themselves, so people <laughs> really do love your voices, and I'd love to my see god. that Bohemian Rhapsody video. Oh my god, yeah! And there's there's another one. So they took the word baby because uh, I say baby so many times in the game, and they they set it to Justin Bieber's <laughs> baby, and it's me <laughs> singing Justin Bieber's baby by sampling all of the the times I say baby in the game. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I think I can, um, I can follow up on that with the fact that I, I don't know how many of you guys have kids of whatever ages, but as I said, my two sons were right smack in the middle of the TF2 um, um, peak of f fame back in the 90s or whatever, the 2000s. And um, it still happens today that when their friends of, in their generation find out that I am the voice of the spy and the pyro, these these people who are in all over the country where my kids have worked are like just gaga they're like oh my god i can't believe it your dad your dad is the spy <laughs> where is he live and uh and one time we were walking i was walking into a, a, a yogurt shop with my youngest son and he stopped me first and he said dad my friend works in there he runs this yogurt shop and he is a mega fan of tf2 so i'm just warning you that you're going to get a reaction when I walk in there with you because he knows your reputation. And it was, uh, I got a free yogurt. That's what, what can I say? You know, what, oh, what, what better reward, what better reward is that? 
So, so, you know, we are superstars among, you know, a certain sect of people out there who uh, are are very um, discriminating, you know, we might not have the actual taste. Yes. There's so (laughs) many people that grew up on this game. Um, uh, Obviously, I don't walk around Home Depot, you know, looking for homes or, you know, (laughs) doing this. I don't sound like that normally, Um, but people pick up on, other game, other games like Metal Gear or whatever, Uncharted or something. So sometimes when I say, "Oh, oh, really? You were in that? You were in that game?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I've done a bunch of stuff. Anything else?" And I just always throw that one out as like, "Well, I was the medic on Team Fortress 2. and they're like, "What? Go with the <laughs> medic?" And, you know, like <laughs> forget about I was on TV shows and all. It doesn't matter. That is like the role. <laughs> My name. Well, I have to. I have to admit, uh, kind of sheepishly, that the now, now, every time I get together in a group with my my children and their friends, um, I can't stop myself. I'll say to them, uh, you know, I, I just met you, but I'm just curious: Are you a gamer? Um, yeah. Ever hear of a game called I, Team Fortress Two? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's kind of. I should have it on my car, my calling card, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, my neighbor works at Microsoft, and uh, she she. Uh, she told me yesterday, she said, you know, she says, I get a lot of mileage out of the fact that you go, you know, my neighbor is the heavy. <laughs> People in, you know, that her that she works with, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. so so we feel really secure in our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I got, I did get a big kick though out of the talk about how people have manipulated the voices and things like that. The one uh, before before a Comic Con or something like this, I'll go and view some of those videos just to sort of remind myself uh, what I sounded like then. And um, the one that I found the most odd and uh, amusing was uh, the one where they took a, a section of um, uh, of the the game dialogue and uh, translated all of Spy's lines into actual French. So <laughs> he's 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 babbling French through the whole thing, which I thought was was uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, people have translated the sniper's lines into Australian, so, you know. Well, that's what it was. I mean, that yeah, that video is like, here are, this, here are the TF2 characters all in their native languages, and like, who else speaks a foreign language except for, you know, with, a, with an accent, <laughs> right, right, yeah. with, with, a, with a non-English accent, you know, but spy, <laughs> maybe pyro. Well, medic, German. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 Heavy yeah. weapons guy, Euro yeah. trash. Finish. Yes. Yeah. Well, so so, but I wonder why they haven't been trans. Why they haven't been translated into German and uh, uh, Bohemian? <laughs> no, but that I mean, you know, that is an answer because a lot of these games have been localized, as they say, localized. Because years ago, you know, I did Glados for Portal. And I was talking to one of my nephews who lived in Japan and I said, oh, Alessandro, get them to invite me to a game convention because I'm the voice of GLaDOS. And Alessandro reminded me, no, you aren't Aunt Ellen. In Japan, GLaDOS speaks Japanese. So it's another actress. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know the actors who have localized Team Fortress 2 for different, you know, um, audiences, yeah, audiences. Differences, different languages. And stuff. So, oh. so perhaps there is a German actor who has done the medic. How in- dare you? But if, but, <laughs> but if, but if that yeah. German actor is true to the original, he will do the medic with an American accent in yes. German. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought we, I thought you were implying that uh, maybe if Valve had uh, had released some uh, foreign language versions of the games. There, yeah, yeah, they have. They have. It's localized in lots in oh, lots they, of markets. Most of it, the, the, all their games are localized. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. I didn't yeah. realize. But but this is interesting because John and I get a lot of emails from all over the world, and uh, a lot of people, certainly in Europe like to listen to the game in English. Right. So they like to listen to the original acting, yeah, but they yeah. also have the localized versions in their language. Mm-hmm. I think, Look, uh, I th- oh, sorry. sorry. No, you- I was just gonna say, since we're talking about how popular 
this game still is, how many people are still playing. I don't know if we're going to get into, I know, you know, everybody's been writing saying, please talk about, there's been some issues with bots and blah, blah, blah. But I think it's time for a team fortress three. Uh, <laughs> for yeah. Except that Gabe game. Newell was frightened by the number three when he was three years old and he's never <laughs> called anything three ever since. So All right. team two, uh, team fortress two redux or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. It'll, it'll be team fortress two. Point five. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, of course. Return of the but, someone, so, but you guys all 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 seem to have uh, quite a bit of savvy when it comes to this um, this milieu. Uh, but but I'm curious with as much uh, as much fandom as there is out there now for Team Fortress Two, is it because it's kind of a, a relic of a bygone age now, or 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 is it that uh, or of the early days, you know, or or is it because um, well, why, why would, why would a company like Valve, now that there's such an upsurge of interest, come out with more versions of the same game? I mean, we're yeah. still here. We can, we can still go in and, you know, record new, new dialogue. I, I think if they do anything, they will just add more content to the game yeah. as it is. You know? Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. That would seem to be to their, in, in their interest. I don't know why they don't do that. So, um, well. Oh. How are we to know that as humble actors? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's we'll the power, to the, power to the people these days. And I agree with you, Dennis. Like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I'm sure they've been writing in, but there's not, nothing wrong with uh, the fans that are watching here. Just write in and say, look, yeah. you want another update? And Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So let them know. Yeah. Give, a, yeah. give a bunch of old folks some work. <clears throat> Right, get us off the board. But, but then, of course, I'm I'm a guy who can never understand why they messed with uh, the the original 1963 Mustang. So, you know, <laughs> why did there have to be new versions of that? It right, right. <laughs> it worked for the VW Bug, right? For uh, <laughs> 80 right. years. Oh, I heard. I just read in the paper that Volkswagen is coming out with an electric bus. Oh yeah, yeah. So the that. old that VW amazing. bus that I rode around hours and hours with my family, they're going to oh. have an electric version. Yes, but if it's a real VW bus, the floor on the passenger side will have to rust out mm. <laughs> so that your feet are just on the road like a Flintstones car. Exactly. German engineering, yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> <Fafik> Nugan. <laughs> <Fafik Nugan. laughs> yes. Yeah. Were we ever able to translate that? <laughs> kind of like Kofefe. <laughs> so have we lost our moderator? Do we have any more questions? There are no more answer? questions. We answered them all. Yep. I mean, yeah. I mean, we we've answered a lot of questions uh, over like everything. Yeah. So um, I feel like uh, now we should put the uh, put the um, put the stream on a little break and then go uh, to our next and uh, and final segment that people have been waiting for. And uh, so uh, the stream will um, the stream will see us in just a little bit. I think.
Hello, everybody, and um, welcome back to the stream. Uh, now we actually have a segment that a lot of people have uh, have been looking forward to because we're going to be reading some uh, some comics um, with the official Team Fortress 2 voice actors. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this one. So, um, well, I hope you're excited. This first one is from the last issue, um, and... It'll be voiced by Ellen and Gary and a little bit of Dennis um, because we have a conversation between the heavy and the administrator. So um, without further ado, I'm going to mute myself and we are going to um, start the reading. Well, I suppose this day had to come eventually. Do me one small kindness at least. <laughs> Do it quickly. Quickly, yes. I have come here for more guns. This is as fast as Harry can talk. When I start working here, you give me Sasha. I like this gun. Over years, you give me Svetlana, Sheila, Oksana, I like these guns also. <laughs> and then you stopped. I see. And you want to know why? Is that it? No, I want more guns. Hmm. You are a very large man, aren't you? I've only ever seen you on camera. Sadly, my resources are not infinite. I can comply, of course, eventually. But I can only accommodate one mercenary at a time. This, this is fine. Harry is only one asking. And how much easier my day would be if that were true. Your colleague beat you here by three minutes. Old woman. I need... I have a name. I am sorry, what is... It's classified. Still, a man wouldn't kill you. I need... My lighter, I know. I want it back. Hello, Pyro. You let good friend Heavy take guns first, yes? Harry give you this instead. Yes, you take this and Heavy takes. <sighs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just the idea of you two killing each other. Oh, that is perfect. <laughs> I wish you idiots hadn't crushed my lighter. 
because now I need a cigarette. Amazingly done. Uh, yeah, oh, it, this, that, that was amazing. amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll be uh, right back with um, we'll be right back with the next one. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, now we are going to do the second comic reading, which is uh, another one from the last issue. Um, and this one is between John and Dennis, or Sniper and Spy. And I'm, I'm sure you all have, have seen it, and I'm very excited uh, to see this. Um, Dennis' uh, webcam isn't working because uh, the Zoom is acting up, but uh, that's fine. Just imagine a very handsome man sitting there. And uh, we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be good to go. So, without further ado, why don't we uh, start? Okay. If I forgot to mention it before now, you snipers are the worst people on the planet. He wasn't a sniper. He was a sadist. There's a difference. Snipers don't muck around with gut shots and monologues. We just take the shot. Yes. 
You're a credit to the institution of shooting people from far away. Some of us would have enjoyed torturing him first, by the way. Yeah, well, next time speak up before I blow his head off. Let's have one of them cigs. So, how do you reckon we get out of here? And then we go right over to the next one, right? Well, I don't, I don't. No, I think we, we go over to the, to the other link, Dennis. <clears throat> oh. I wonder where the others are. Yes, I was wondering the same thing. Except about your pants and when you'll be putting some on. It's nothing but robots and rubble here, mate. I'm not exactly sneaking through a pants store. I still don't see why you couldn't have stolen pants off the dead man. You do know what people do in their pants when they die, right? Yes, I'm aware. It would still be preferable. Yeah, I have an idea. Give us your coat. All right. I said, give us your... I heard exactly what you said. Bushman. This is a $10,000 custom-tailored Louis Crabbe Marché jacket. The cloth is from silkworms raised at a suit micro-farm in Tuscany from a secret pattern passed down by monk tailors since the 7th century. I will let you use it as an adult diaper when you pay it off when you pry it off my cold, dead body. Amazing. Well done. Well done, guys. Wow. Well done. Uh, I'm sorry, would you let me take that? This is the first time I've seen this dialogue. Let me take that last trip. Yes. All right. I will let you use it as an adult diaper when you pry it off my cold, dead body. Amazing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well done well done good job guys that was awesome that was brilliant let's get uh let's get ready for the next one <clears throat> All right, guys, we are back and ready for the third and last comic, which is a, an iconic one, too, if you guys um, have read the, read the last issue. Um, and I hope you guys are ready. Uh, we got Robin and Gary uh, doing this one, and it's going to be awesome. So without further ado, why don't we just get into it? All right.
So, after you shot Sniper... Uh, uh, technically, I was only present. You brought him back from the dead? Mm. <laughs> Ingeniously so, yes. <laughs> uh, well, that's all right then. Oh, uh, could I trouble you for uh, the hydrogen peroxide? I hear you go. Uh, danke. <laughs> this won't take a moment. You know, Doc, I always wondered, you can bring a man back to life. Why can't you grow me another eye? <laughs> well, of course I can. <laughs> the procedure is quite simple, really. <laughs> What? Oh. Uh. You tell me. You mean to tell me all these years you could have put me eye back in me bloody any time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me all these years you could put me eye back any time you bloody liked? Could have. My friend, I've given you your eye back at least eight times. And every time it functions normally until Halloween night, at which point it grows bat wings and attacks us. Huh. I mean, we've fought a giant, your eye, a Dracula, your eye, a brain in a jar, your eye, a knife wielding ventriloquist dummy, your eye. One year, he traveled back in time and tried to become our parents. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, the point is, in my medical opinion, <laughs> and as a man of science, I do not say this lightly, that, uh, that I suck it is haunted. Wait, why don't I remember any of this? Oh, that, uh, I scooped that part out of your brain, so, uh, oh, that, I scooped that part of your brain out so you'd stop asking me. <laughs> Aye, fair enough. <sighs> Hold on. I did just ask you. <sighs> I know. <laughs> Sadly, brain scooping is not an exact science. <laughs> Uh, my advice would be to try not to remember things. <laughs> Don't remember things. God. That's the spirit. Oh, oh. Also, your leg is fixed. I even gave it its own little brain. <laughs> so get out there and let's see what that does. <laughs> You've got it, kindly stranger. <laughs> Amazing. Well done. Oh, wow. That was, that was incredible. <laughs> Everybody's still got it. Everybody still has it. Wow. Oh, my God. <coughs> Amazing. Um, hold on. Um, everybody on the stream, we'll be right back again. We, uh, we got to prepare a secret um, special thing. Um, so be right back. All right.
Hello guys and welcome back. Um, now we all just kind of wanted, you know, to say thank you for being here and maybe, uh, you know, talk a little because this is this, uh, of course, has been super nice getting the crew together, but we um, they've actually also been doing doing signings and such. And and some people may actually not know about this. So uh, if you guys uh, haven't done your signings yet, uh, let, let us know the date uh, because, you know, we'd love to know and um, and where you can get this stuff. So uh, if anybody's got anything on that, please uh, let us know. Well, since I'm first over here, I just wanted to thank everybody. Hold on. Well, Archimedes wants to say something. Okay, thank you, Archimedes. Now go clean your room. Um, I wanted to thank everybody uh, who tuned in for this. Uh, this has been an amazing experience. I want to thank all of my fellow cast members, Streamly, Andrew Ho for putting this together, Shork for doing a fantastic job. And um, I will be posting uh, where I'm going to be signing. I think uh, we can, I, I think the store is going to remain open for another week uh, at streamily.com uh, slash TF2. And um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get some more group posters up there. They have signed out. We will check into that. But uh, mainly, I just want to thank you all for all the love over the years for Medic and TF2. And it was a great pleasure for me to work on this game. Thank you. Thank you. Am I up next? Yeah. So, hi, John Patrick Lowry, Voice of the Sniper. Yeah, I have to echo what uh, Robin said. It's been great fun. It's been great fun doing the game and great fun interacting with the fans over the over all these years. Um, Ellen and I will be doing our Streamily signings um, over the next couple of days. Uh, we have to arrange that with Andrew, but we will, if you want to check out my uh, uh, Twitter page or my uh, Facebook page, when we get uh, the actual time of the live signings uh, put together, we will post it there. Um, and uh, I just like to say, keep your heads down, Mike. As I say what they said, <laughs> thank you so much. And I must leave now because I will not do overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, how about uh gary what about you well uh again i just want to say thank thank you all for coming makes me feel real harsh oh, huh? heavy very touched you all make heavy proud that's true <laughs> i may and i'll tell you this I just found out I could grow a new eye just today. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. And I can't wait to see you in stereo. <laughs> anyway, it's been fun. How about you, Dennis? Well, I think it's all been said up to this point. I feel like the last guy to get the Oscar. But uh, thank you. Uh, mainly to to all of our fans who tuned in today i mean that's that's why we're all here and that's what made it work today um it's been great fun and um je suis très heureux de faire votre connaissance it's wonderful to meet you all and we'll hope to see you again sometime thanks to uh, all the people who all the guys and gals who made this possible for us today and uh from spy and pyro i'd like to say au revoir mes amis bon chance and <laughs> Goodbye. Amazing. Thank oh, you. Oh, my, oh, one, 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 more, one more thing. You, you asked about the signing. Uh, we have one planned uh, tomorrow for Spy and Pyro, uh, Monday at uh, noon Pacific time. So that would be the time to tune in to Streamily, I guess. Is that that's correct, right? Yes. Uh, Streamily.com slash TF2. Get them while you I can. Wanted to, I wanted to add uh, one other thing uh, because it's been so fast, fantastic meeting you guys and uh, hopefully, you know, COVID is petering out. I would love the opportunity to be on stage, you know, with this cast if we can get anybody else. So if you have a convention in your area and you're interested, get in touch with the promoter and tell them, 
that you want to see us all because I would love to do something with all you guys live. This has been so much fun. Somebody mentioned a Comic-Con in Scotland and I, I would be up for oh, that. Oh, I'd love to do that. Sweet. NEC, Scotland. Yeah, come on. Amazing. Well, thank you all so much. And um, yeah, this has been a very special date um, for the for the TF2 community. As said, we've had like seven, eight, nine, ten thousand people watching live. And I'm sure there's wow. going to be lots of people watching Amazing. afterwards. Um, so I, I want to give a personal thank you for inspiring me and so many people to do what we do. We've grown up with you guys uh, since I was 12. And uh, you guys are one of the main reasons why I learned English and I now actually have a job in like video game marketing and, and all this stuff like that. And that's happened to multiple people. So I just wanted to let you guys know how much you mean to us and how big of an impact you've truly had on the internet. So uh, that is, well, thank you, Shork. So and uh, you, Shork. you did a marvelous job. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. <laughs> you saved all our bacon today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. Um, and without further ado, uh, why don't we just all say, you know, goodbye. So. Alvidasen! Hello! Das Fedanje, Tavarish! Good night, mates! Godless. Oh.